Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I wanted to talk to you about chapter 3 and for me that has to do with polynomials and this is more specifically section 1. I'll write that up here. So I want to show you a couple of examples of just some generic polynomials. I just found a couple I came up with here. So example 1, 2x cubed minus 3, 4x plus 9 and then we've got an x squared which is this stuff. So there's a couple of important vocabulary words. That's mostly what I have to talk to you about in this section. So leading coefficients that's the number in front of the x with the highest exponent. So with the highest exponent, I have to find the things up here with the highest exponent. Let's look at number 1. Well, the highest exponent is an x to the third power. That's bigger than just x to the first power. If you mind, that is x to the first power, just like this one is 2. So x to the third is my largest degree x, my largest x value as an exponent there. So my leading coefficient is the number in front, so it's the 2, for example, 1. For example, 4, don't cheat, I need to look find the highest degree x, so the highest exponent up here. So I have x to the 0 power, first, third, and fifth. They just happen to be odd numbers here. It doesn't happen like that always. So it's x to the fifth. That's my highest exponent. So I'm going to pick the number out in front, 4. So for example, 2, it is a 4. Our degree, that's the largest exponent. Example 1, my largest exponent is 3. The next one, highest degree here is the 5. So for example, 2, 5 is my highest exponent. That's my largest exponent, so that's my degree. End behavior. When we're talking about end behavior, we're talking about what does the end of our graph do. There's a couple of options. If it's an odd degree, or like in these last examples, looking at the highest degree exponent, this one's a 3, this one's a 5, they're both odd numbers. It's not the number out in front, it's the exponent. The largest exponent in any of these, in this case 5 and then 3, both of those are odd numbers. If they're odd, they're going to go in opposite directions. So that means the left side and the right side are going to go differently. One's going to go up and the other one's going to go down. Or down and then up, whichever way you want to think about it. But both of these are possible options. The crap in the middle, we don't know about yet. But the ends, that comes from what kind of degree we have. If it's even, think about x squared, a parabola. Both ends go in the same direction, whether they both go up or both go down. Well, that goes for other things. But they will definitely both go into the same direction. And that's an important feature here, the leading coefficient. Now, this is getting a little bit more specific. If it's a positive number, our right side is going to go up, no matter what it is. If it's even, so that means both of them are going in the same direction, my right side is going to go up. Well, if you know the right side's going up, because leading coefficient is positive, and you know that it's an even exponent or even degree, that means that the left side is also going to go up. It's going to follow the right, because that's what even functions do. Let's look at an odd one. My leading coefficient is positive, so I know the right side is going up. But if it's an odd degree, these ends go in opposite directions, so my left side must be going down. It's very important to know the difference between your left and your right. So. If it is negative, again, we're talking about the leading coefficients. That's the number all the way out in front. In this example, it was a 2 and a 4. In both cases, they're positive numbers. So the right side of both of those graphs are going up. Those are going to look something like this left side because they have an odd degree. So that left side is going to go down. But I know on the right side of the graph, it's going to go up. Now, if they're negative, the leading coefficient, the number all the way out in front, it's going to be going down on the right side. All of this has to do with my right side. It's going to go down. And then you have to determine, is the degree odd or even? This left side, I know that this is an odd degree because you go in opposite directions. And my leading coefficient must be negative because the right side goes down. This one, both are going in the same direction, so it's an even degree or the largest exponent that exists is a po or is an even number, so it's an even degreed exponent. And because the right side is going down, it must be a negative leading coefficient. Let's look at an example. Here's my function: four, or sorry, x to the fourth, two x cubed minus thirteen x squared minus fourteen x plus twenty-four. This is the picture it gives you. So the important thing here is to notice how many 
dots are how many times you cross the x-axis and how many turns you have and where the ends are going. So let's take a quick peek. Let's double check to make sure this is in order because it's not always in order. I mean like that. I'll sometimes switch it up. But let's look at the exponents. 4, 3, 2, 1. And this is actually x to the 0 power because uh, anything to the 0 power is 1. So that's just x to the 0 times 24. So we don't have to worry about that part so much. But they are going down, our exponents. My degree, actually no, let's do number of terms first. How many terms do I have? That's the stuff that's separated by the plus and minus. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. What is my degree? The degree comes from my largest exponent. That largest exponent is this one in front. It happens to be a 4. Now is that even or is it odd? Even. Good job. All right. Leading coefficient. That is the number that is in front of the term that gave me my degree. So that's this front term here. What's the number in front of that? Please, don't say 0. Just because there's nothing there doesn't mean it's 0. There is a 1 there. If there's nothing, it's assumed to be a 1. All right, so my leading coefficient is a 1. End behavior. So for this, it's asking, what are my ends doing? I'm going to say this simply and then fancily, if that's a thing. So I'm going to say both going same direction. Now let's get fancy. And in fancy terms, I'm going to say as x goes to negative infinity. Okay, so that's this left side. x is getting smaller as I go from 0 to the left. Hopefully you agree with that. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. That's negative. That's smaller. And as that is happening, y is going to infinity. Because as I'm going left, my graph is going up. Another thing that is true, that's my left side of my graph, my left tail, if you want to say that. My other side is where x is going towards positive infinity. So as my x values get larger, what is my y value doing? It's going up. It's also getting larger. y is going to infinity. So I have not fancy, fancy. Oh, I should say same direction and up. They're both going up. All right, next, turning points. This is slightly more fancy. Turning points are where I go from increasing to decreasing. So looking at my graph, where do I turn from going down to going up? Well, a couple of times these things happen. I go down, and then I turn to go back up my graph at this coordinate point. Might be hard for you to read. I'm just going to say it. I have another turning point, two more in fact. I'm going to separate these by commas. This one up here is a negative 0 0.5 comma 27.563. And I have one more down here. It is right at this little spot where I turn from going down to going back up again. And that is 2.193, negative 25. Cool, cool, not too bad, right? I'm, I'm literally just picking out points that I can recognize as what they are. A turning point, well, it turned. X-intercepts, also not bad. We've done these kinds of things before. Don't freak out. It's the same thing, but with an uglier graph, or prettier. It's your take. I don't care. We have four of them. This one, that one, this one, and that other one. I'm just going to list those out here. I have negative 4, 0. This one way over here. I have negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 0. All four of those. X-intercepts. Uh, we would also call those roots or zeros. Now, while I'm right here, let's find the relative maximum. The relative max, or the max kind of where it's at. It's not about the overall picture. It's just about, according to its neighbors, what is it? This little fella. That is the highest spot if he looks left and if he looks right. Oh, so he's facing us, so, you know, that's left and that's right to him. Anyway, if he looks left and right, he's the tallest. So that's my relative max.
This arrow relative max. Now, relative min. Same situation. If you're at the bottom of the barrel, well, if I look left and I look right, I'm the only one there. So this little fella, relative min, because if he looks left, if he looks right, he's alone. He's at the bottom. That coordinate point. There's another one, though. There might be more than one. Look over here. This coordinate point. This little lady looks left, looks right, bottom of the barrel. That's it. Doesn't matter about this one over here. She can't see that far. We're just looking right here. Look left, look right, bottom. It's a bad R, but it's an R. All right. Those are all the things I needed. I'm going to now graph a function based on these things. So I'm going to go through. I just like to read these real quick. Okay, my graph or my y, my function here, it's positive on the interval, this stuff. So it's positive or above the x-axis. It's up here. The function is negative on the interval, these things. So between these coordinate points, these x values, notice all of these things are going to be x values for all of this. Okay, this is interval notation. So like where x is 0 to where x is 2, I'm negative. That means I'm going to be, there's that between 0 and 2, I'm going to be below my axis, down in here where I'm wiggling. Okay. Our function is increasing on these intervals. So let's do this 1 to 2.5, 1 to 2.5, I'm going up. I could be going up like this, or I could be down here and going up. That just means I'm increasing, okay. increasing or slanting towards the upward direction. Decreasing, that's the opposite. It means I'm going down on these intervals. So from negative 1 to 1, negative 1 to 1, I'm going down. I could be all negative. I could be in the middle and do a little bit of positive and a little bit of negative. Or I could be all the way up here the whole time. I just know that I'm going down while I'm between the negative 1 and 1. So let's see what I can be more specific about. We kind of read through all of those things. I'm positive between negative infinity to negative 3. And then I, I'm not picking it up even at negative 3. It starts over here at negative 2. So I know for a fact I am positive or above my axis from negative infinity to negative 3. That's the stuff over here on my graph. I know I'm positive and I come down into negative 3. I have a circle right there. If you look at negative, well, I'm negative between negative 3 and negative 2. So that means now I'm down below my graph. I must have crossed. If I was positive up to negative 3, and I was negative from negative 3 to negative 2, well, I must have crossed right there. What's it say is happening at negative 3? Well, it doesn't say anything about at that point, right? These are parentheses, not brackets. So that means at that point, I'm neither not positive nor negative. So that means I'm 0. And I have no other information except that I am just going, or that I am positive or above my axis. So that's probably my end. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. From 2 to 3, I'm positive. But from 3 to infinity, I'm negative. From 3 to infinity, I'm negative. This is nice because I already have my end behavior. So from this, I know that my function has a odd degree, so the largest exponent on all of this stuff is going to be an, an odd number because my tails are going in different directions. And I know that the leading coefficient, or the, the number right in front of that largest exponent, is negative because my right side goes down. So there's a lot of information I know just about this. Next thing, from negative 3 to negative 2, I'm negative. So I'm down here somewhere. Notice I didn't even label my y-axis. That part doesn't matter. We're just trying to get at what could the graph look like, really. And I am decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2.5. So this is where I want to see where to do some things overlap. From negative infinity to negative 2.5. And, and according to this two, these two things are happening at the same time. So from uh, my negative 3 up to negative 2.7 or 6.7, I am negative. So I'm going 
down here until about 2.67-ish, two and two-thirds, somewhere in there, I'm probably closer to two and a half anyway. And then from there, I believe I start increasing. So I start increasing from negative 2.67 to one. So from here up to negative one, I'm increasing, going up. But I should try and figure out where do I cross my x-axis again? Because I don't know, do I go up real sharp or do I go up real flat? Well, let's look at the positive and negative stuff. That's gonna give us our coordinate points. At negative two, I change again. I'm positive from negative two to zero. If I'm positive from negative two to zero, I must have crossed my x-axis. So I'm positive from negative two to zero, but from zero to two, I'm negative. So if I'm positive here, somewhere up here, and then I'm negative from zero to two, then I must have crossed right here at zero. If I'm negative from three to infinity, but I was positive from two to three, two to three, this chunk here, I was positive. That's what this thing says. And then after that, I'm negative. Well, that means I must have crossed at this two. We can go the other way too. From zero to two, I was negative. Zero to two, right here, I was negative. Down here, where my pen is. And then two to three, I'm positive. So I popped up here. Well, I must have crossed through at some point. So that's where I get those po coordinate points. And a lot of the time, not all of the time, but a lot of the time, I'm going to zigzag between these points. So now I need to figure out some more stuff. From negative 2.67 to negative 1, so from over here, I am increasing. And I know I cross at this negative 2. So I'm increasing until I get to 1. From negative 1, what happens? Well, I pick it up down here. From negative 1 to positive 1, I'm going down. So I knew I crossed through at 0, 0 because that's what my numbers were up from my increasing, or sorry, my positive and negative intervals. My positive and negative intervals told me where I crossed my x-axis. So what happens from one and to the right? So from, let's say, one to two. Well, one to two and a half, actually, I'm increasing. So from here to two and a half, I'm increasing. And then from two and a half, that's down here now, to infinity, I'm decreasing. Now I made this very jagged. We have to know that this would be more curvy. Don't have to be fancy, I did it in a Sharpie, so it's, it's gonna be kind of ugly. And again, the heights don't really matter. As long as you have the right increasing and decreasing in these turns, these turns happen at specific points. My turns come from these changes in increasing and decreasing. My x-intercepts come from positive and negative stuff. My increasing, decreasing give me my turning points. Multiplicity, real quick. Fancy word, it's not multiplying, but it kind of is. So it's how many times a factor happens. So in this last example, each of these things, I know they only actually happened one time, and that is because I passed through those points. If I pass through a point, it has an odd number as its multiplicity. So well, I guess I don't know that it only happened once, but it happened an odd number of times. If it happens an even number of times, like in this example, what would this be? Parabola. Since that's a parabola, I know it looks something like this. So I hit my three and I bounce right off. That's what happens when there's an even exponent on my factor. So there, I hit and bounce off. Here, I hit and bounce off. That's kind of the fun thing about this. I know a lot about the graph if I can see how it factors. So I, this first chunk, multiplicity of 2. Next chunk, multiplicity of 4. And the last one, a multiplicity of 7. Now, if I wanted to figure out my total end behavior, I could add up all of these numbers. The 2, 4, and the 7 get me 6 and 7 is 13. So my total degree is 13. So I know my ends are going to go in opposite directions. I can fill in some gaps from there. Speaking of gaps, let's actually do that. So if I were to set all of this equal to zero, that's how I would find my x-intercepts. That's how I have this marked negative two, three, and six. My degree is 13, so that means I know my ends are going to go in opposite directions. 
I just don't know which one goes up and which one goes down, right? Which scenario do I have here? The right side go down, left side go up, or left side go down and right side go up? Well, I can tell that based on what my leading coefficient is going to be. And I can do that based on these numbers in the front. So I have a number in front here, squared, it's going to be positive. Number in front here, uh, to the fourth, going to be positive. Number here, to the seventh, but that's a positive number. Positive number to the seventh power, going to be positive. So I know my leading coefficient is positive. So that means it's this situation. So this end goes up, this end goes down. Now we have to figure out the gaps in the middle. And I could plug in some numbers and see what I get. See if I end up being positive up here or negative down here, and then I can kind of connect my loop. Or I can look at this. This negative 2 comes from this middle chunk. It has a multiplicity of 4, which means it's even, which means I'm going to bounce off of this point. And I go until I hit my next one. Now the factor that gave me 3, that's this first chunk. Is that an even or an odd exponent? Even, so it's multiplicity of two. So I'm gonna bounce off of this one and come to this one. Let's double check, make sure we're okay. Has an odd number of seven as my multiplicity, so I should pass through that coordinate point. And that's roughly what this graph is gonna look like. It's awesome, isn't it? So cool. All right, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, click that like button down below. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna see more stuff like this. And I hope you enjoy your day. And I hope I don't get a cold. It kind of sounds like I'm getting sick.